Yo, what's going on everybody? It is Straight to Boston here, aka the King of Boston. Today we're back for episode number 12 of my Colorado Rockies Out of the Park Baseball Series here on OOTP 16. And today we're back with the mid-season episode for 2019. And I'm happy to say things are off to a pretty good start for the team this year. We're 30-22, and 22, um, so a few games better than we were at this point last year. We are currently second in the division, two and a half games back. And we currently hold the second wild card. Actually, it's the first wild card number, and I thought we were behind the Nationals still but we are now ahead, so there you go. Um, playing, definitely playing a lot better, uh, and the, the thing I'm actually happy to say is I don't even think our offense is playing up to its capabilities yet. Now, I will say this, Jose Fernandez did get hurt again, so this is starting to become uh, kind of a concerning thing, but he got hurt about uh, two weeks ago at this point, so he's basically going to miss nine to ten weeks with uh, this sprained ankle, and... Yeah, so we'll, we'll get him back before this episode is over in all likelihood, but still, um, you know, kind of a concerning thing that he's getting hurt once again. Juan Lucero also got hurt. Now, he had actually been playing pretty well uh, for a while, and then he sort of came back to reality and his OPS dropped below 700, so we weren't too disappointed to lose him. And his replacement has actually been a lot better, Bryant Harris. Now, Bryant Harris is a guy who we drafted in the sixth round in 2015, and he... Um, you know, was in double A and really only got a taste of triple A this year before he got called up, but he has really made a, a, a really good progression and I really like the way his game is going. I think he could be a really good right fielder for us. You can see his defense in right field is insane. So he's, he just got called up. So, um, you know, right now he's playing every other game, basically platooning with Joey Gallo at this point. I haven't quite made it like a full platoon. Um, but you know, I basically, I think actually what I'll do is I'll have Gallo, just sit against lefties and have Harris play every third game against righties. But, um, you know, bit, oh, whoops. basically switching them off in right field uh, for the most part. As Gallo's been good this year, but he hasn't really been that good. Um, you know, 739 OPS. He plays a pretty good defensive right field, and I would just put him in left, but um, he uh, doesn't even have defensive ratings in left, and I don't think he'd be any good because his range and error are just 50. So, uh, But we do have Isael Soto playing uh, every other game. In, uh, or every fourth game, I should say, with Mike Poppy in left. And I'm actually going to switch this to every other game as well because Soto's playing better than Poppy right now. Um, and then Adams and George are also switching off. Adams has come up and played pretty well in a short sample. George has kind of been okay. But our offense, like I said, isn't really up to its full capability yet because Altuve and Arenado are both struggling. And uh, so I think when they get going, then we can really start to see our offense pick it up a bit. And our, our pitching has been pretty good. Reuse followed up last season with another good performance so far. Tyler Chatwood's had a good bounce back campaign. 3.75 ERA through 10 starts. Uh, Urias has come up after Fernandez got hurt. He's put into a uh, solid start so far. His FIP is really bad because uh, he keeps allowing home runs. So that's kind of concerning. We'll see if that keeps up. But anyway, I'm um, Sonny Gray. He was pitching a little bit better, and it looks like his FIP is still pretty good. So because uh, he's on pace for five WAR despite the high ERA. So I'm not too concerned about him yet or anything. And uh, Paxton's struggling a little bit, but we have some other options too. I mean, Rafael Montero's having a good year. And uh, I also saw Carlos Martinez as a free agent. Oh, and this is a guy I want to get a start soon, Liz Alberto Bonilla, who apparently has been converted to a starter down in the minors, and he's been pitching really well so far. Um, so I want to get him a start uh, at some point, and then, you know, I can also, I found a deal where I could flip that guy, Bonilla, for Alan Webster, who's having a pretty good year, and he's become a pretty good pitcher in Arizona. I'll show you him. And he's a guy I really kind of would like to pick up. And he would cost me Bonilla, but like, look at the year he's having. And he obviously wouldn't keep that up, but he's been good for a while. He put in a good 21 starts last year with Arizona, and even before then, 10 starts in 2017. So he's turned into a pretty solid pitcher, and I would like to get my hands on him as well. But I want to see what Bonilla can do for us first, so I think I'll call him up uh, maybe in another week or so. But we got the first-year player draft, so let's do that right now, and then we will... Uh move on with the season but continue the next pick so yeah this is a really a uh, weak draft i already checked this out a little bit but it's a really weak draft according to our head scout so you can see we're already uh number pick number 16 and we can't even really get a uh, like a stutter or anything although this guy looks pretty good i'll probably go with him um joe davis yeah i figured i figured that's the best guy we're gonna find because the osa ratings were pretty high on him yeah so we'll go with him then big power hitting first baseman you can always use guys like that danny taylor High school bat, six foot two, two hundred five. We will draft and meet his demands. Only a little bit over the uh, the allotted or the the slot bonus or whatever. And I think we, yeah, we got plenty of money to spend. All right, so now um, I honestly say let's just go over top OOTP guys and see uh, which ones might be worth picking, like a uh, Jim Gaston maybe. Yeah, I might go with a guy like Jim Gaston in the second round. 
Um, what is he? Neutral. Throws 96. Yeah, alright. So I'll go with Jim Gaston. Well, this is actually a supplemental pick. I forgot we got the supplemental pick for uh, uh, Jordan Lyles. Alright, and this is going to be another overslot guy, but that's alright. We still have plenty of budget room for the draft. And now Ch ooh, Chase Pinter again. Alright, so we, we have to take Chase Pinter because he's been in the draft for a while, and I think he could actually be pretty good. Alright, so we'll draft him, and then we'll let the head scout do the rest. Alright, and there we go. And then we'll just make sure we offer uh, contracts to all these guys, and then continue with the season. And I'll probably cut out, do what I usually do, cut out till the uh, international amateur free agent period. And uh, do that. But yeah, so I'm pretty excited with how the team's playing so far. I uh, am pretty encouraged by what I see. I think we can get better too, which is the good thing. I'm not sure what our Pythagorean win loss is, but we can check that. Let's just get the offer set to these guys. This guy will... Oh, actually, only 200k. So we'll offer him 500,000. Make sure he signs on. Whoops. All right, so let's see what our Pythagorean one loss is. Uh, ooh, wow, even better. 33 and 19. So, yeah, I'm pretty encouraged. And uh, I think I'm going to cut out here. So plans while I cut out and wait till uh, In between now and July 2nd, the plan is probably to get... Uh, Lis, Lis Alberto Benia, a starter two in here, maybe for Paxton. Maybe he spots Paxton and Gray. I think I'm going to DFA Jared Cozart. Uh, he's been off to a rough start this year. 3.5 million. Actually, I think I uh, there was one, I think I could trade him to St. Louis and get uh, this half decent infielder. Not Matt Adams, um, but I figure I might as well. Oh yeah, we could get Alan Hansen for him. And Hansen, although we have a ton of infielders already, Hansen's a bit cheaper and can go in the minor leagues. Um, yeah, I don't think we get that guy, Navarro, Mesoraco. We don't really need another reliever. All right, so I'll get Alan Hansen, and then I'll probably just demote Alan Hansen to uh, AAA, even though I think I already have, yeah, I have Ketel Marte in AAA too, so the, we really don't have room for Hansen, but the point is he's cheaper, and I can send him into AAA. Oh, actually, we do have to waive him. Nah, I did not know that. All right, well, that's fine. Either way, he's cheaper. We might actually be able to trade him for something. I don't know. We can try... Oh, this screen. No. <laughs> I got into one of these these screens I've been going on rants on lately, but uh, whatever. Alright, so here are our Alan Hansen trade offers, and we could actually get somebody pretty good like Yoan Cespedes, although uh, he's got like a three-year contract, and he has a bad personality or whatever. Um, so yeah, I'm just really looking for someone. I don't really think I want to keep any of these guys, so if any of them are cheaper than... Yeah, I don't think we're going to find one cheaper. Alright, so we'll just let Hansen go through waivers then. And... Um, Yes, yeah, so that is the plan, and then I will get back to you guys in about a month or so. All right. All right, so we're at July 2nd. We're now 44 and 32. We've been playing pretty good, although I think we've lost, like, four of our last six maybe or something like that. Um, but for the most part, we've been playing really well. I want to check that. Yeah, we lost, uh, yeah, we lost four of our last six. So, because I remember we were 42 and 28 at one point. But uh, anyway, besides the point. So, yeah, standings-wise... One game back of the Dodgers still tied in the loss column, and we currently hold the number one wild card. So that is pretty good. And um, we got Luis Alberto Benia up here. He's made two starts. He's been pretty good in both of them, uh, almost identical pitching lines in both starts. And uh, we've got Paxton in the bullpen right now, but I'm going to give Paxton a start over Urias next time because Urias has had uh, four or five really, really bad starts and only one sort of... Uh, lucky eight inning shutout. He gave up eight hits and only had three strikeouts. So, uh, yeah, we're gonna give Paxton a start for Urias next time around, and we might even send Urias back down um, and get him a start in AAA or something, and maybe call up. Um, could call up. Oh yeah, we sent Brian Harris back down and activated Juan Lucero. Um, we do have Jose Fernandez coming back in three weeks. That's very encouraging, and we have Scott Ober coming back actually in uh, another week. And we'll probably give him a shot. He's pretty good last year. Before he uh, went down with uh, Tommy John or whatever. But we don't really have a good reliever to replace him with. I guess we could do Hector Garcia. But uh, we could really use a left-handed reliever. Oh, well, actually, I guess not. We have. Uh, I was thinking Shreve was struggling, but we have Ortiz still. So. Alright, cool. Um, but we got the International Amateur Free Agent Signing Period. And uh, we do not have any restrictions this year. But again, does not look like a very strong class. We will go after this guy, of course. Oops, give him... 200 though, 200 G's. Um, the question is, should we go after Jose Perez? Um, looks like he's gonna be pretty good. We have a lot of money. 
he would cost us uh, probably... Nah, I don't think we're going to do it. I'll pass on him. He'd probably cost us like $4 million. And I just don't want to pay that for that guy. And then restrict us for next year and then have you know, some really good stud come out next year. Um, plus, we can get some of these pitchers. We'll give... Uh, yeah, well, actually, we'll, we'll get maybe both these good pitchers to make up for it. Oh, yeah. Let's give him 1.2 million. And we'll give the other... Yeah, this guy... Uh, this guy's not quite as good, but we'll still get him. All right, and then that puts us at 275. So we've got 250,000 left to spend. We can get Octavio Sanchez for 150,000. Oops. And uh, we'll just save the rest of it, just in case. All right. Um, so let's keep simulating ahead here. Make sure these guys sign. We'll eventually get to the all-star break. Ooh, Kyle Crockett gets hurt. Oh, that stinks. Crockett out for three to four months. Ooh, man, that really stinks. He's durable, too. He was having such a good year as our closer. Ooh, man, that, that really stinks. All right, so Chansey comes back for the playoffs, but now we definitely got to go out and get another reliever. Um, maybe we can call up uh, Tyler J. <laughs> Why not? And put him as a reliever. Let's see, he'll be in our top prospects page. Oh, whoops, we gotta do this top prospects page. Yeah, here we go. Tyler J, we'll call him up. See what he can do. Former second round pick. He's been pretty much a bust so far. Um, new closer will make. Ooh, maybe Rafael Montero. He hasn't pitched a ton this year, but he's been pretty good. Uh, maybe we'll leave him. Let's make Conley the closer for now. Who's got the lowest FIP is the question. Uh, Montero, Bonilla, Conley. All right, so we'll give Conley a chance. Tyler J will make the long man slash emergency starter. And all right. Oh, we could make. Uh, uh, yeah, we'll leave Mutz as the setup man. All right, so let's keep going forward here. Then that really stinks that we lose Kyle Crockett. We have to get another reliever. That's one of the reasons why I like that Kluber deal so much was getting Kyle Crockett because I remember he was. Oh, dang it, Quinones. Demanding more money. Oh, I'm not sure we're going to be able to get him then. Uh, how much have we spent? Yeah, so we only have 1300 left to get Quinones. Where is he? Oh, all the way down here. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to get him for 1300 No. Okay, so we could go over and get him. He looks like he might be really good, but... Eh, only 89, 91 mile an hour. We're just going to have to let him go, unfortunately. All right, so keep going then. We got everyone else at least. Yeah, he signs with New York. Uh, let's make sure we got all our draft picks signed. Yep. Perfect. So we can keep going to the all-star break here then. We've won three games in a row. Four in a row. Oh, I saw... Ooh, we sweep... Oh, no, 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 never mind. I thought we swept Arizona. George is suspended. Um, I saw Martin Perez on waivers. Probably uh, 7.5 million. Never mind. Whoops. Um, Joey Vada's been on waivers a couple times, but he's still making a zillion bucks from Cincinnati. Um, Alright, so expiring personnel info. Hitting coach. We should probably bring back our hitting coach. We've uh, been a pretty good offensive team for a while now, so... Offer him an extension. Three years. Perfect. Go back. Um, Alright, don't really care about the owner goals. <laughs> I literally have not checked those once. All right, and we've got uh, Texas coming up, so we're going to have to set our lineup against DHs here. We get Scott Oberg back, so we could give Oberg a shot over... Eh. Actually, we'll send Oberg on a uh, rehab assignment for now. Actually, we'll probably... Yeah, we'll just demote him. Put him back on the 40-man, though. Give him a... Uh... Oh, wait, why can't we put him on the 40-man? Can we put him on the active? Nope, why can't we put him on the 40-man? Whatever, we'll just do rehab assignment. Screw it. Um, deal with that later. Uh, let's see. Alright, so Paxton got in. Did okay. Could give Tyler J a start for Paxton. We might do that, actually. He's got... Yeah, he'll be ready for the next start. Alright, long man. Emergency. Um, it might even... Actually, when's the all-star break? Okay, yeah, he will make that start. Um, we don't have to worry about this doubleheader. Screwing up our rotation, because we have off days before it and after it. Um, we just have to worry about our lineup for DHs, and whoops, I didn't mean to do that, copy, copy, alright, so for DHs, we will DH Soto, oh, whoops, 
and hit him ninth. And we'll just do the same thing here. Won't even worry about backup right fielder and center fielder. All right, cool. And uh, yeah, we'll have him. Gallo, I think, is also 65 and right. Yeah, so we're good there. All right. Got to the waiver wire, Matt Joyce. And ooh, we get swept in the doubleheader. Oh, I see Fernando Rodney on waivers and Johnny Venters. Dang, Rodney's 42. Holy smokes. Yeah, Johnny Venters is not nearly the pitcher he was when we had him. All right, now we got a three game set against Miami. I think we might have one or two more series before the All Star break. I think the All Star break's going to be late this year. I oh, know, it's right here. Oh, and I forgot to. Oh, my goodness. I forgot to do this again. I f keep forgetting to turn this off, so I'm going to have to cut out once again and wait for the All Star teams to load. I apologize. I will do this right after we come back. All right, there we go. We got it all loaded, and uh, I'm going to immediately turn that off. League settings. Uh, I think it's going to be one of these. Oh, here it is. Enable baseball cards. Turn that shit off. That is what always takes so long, because they got to make baseball cards for everyone who makes an all-star game, and it's like, oh my god, for what? Like, I'll show you. Jose Barrios. Baseball cards. Oh, look, I can see every time he made an all-star team. Like, oh my god. But uh, anyway, I don't mean to complain too much. So Jose Barrios, there's a all-star all numero uno. Let's take a look at the guys who made it for us, though. That's what we really care about. So Colorado, Tommy Conley makes it uh, one of the first times, maybe the first time we've had a pitcher make it. Tom J. Murphy. Uh, so this the decision to go with him over Vasquez is looking better and better each day. Jose Altuve made it, so that's good. He was off to a bit of a slow start, as we uh, saw earlier in the video, so he's turned it around clearly. Um, David Dahl makes it. That's great. He's you know turning into a superstar. And there we go. Uh, any other names we recognize, like former players who might have traded away, can laugh at the moves that I've made. Uh, I don't really recognize any. All right, cool. Um, so let's keep going with that, see who wins the All-Star game, and then we'll re reassess our rotation after the All-Star break. See how Tyler J did in his first start, I'm not really sure quite yet. Keep going, we'll see you one in a moment. And hopefully Fernandez is back any day now. Um, Alright, so the NL wins it looks like. Greg Pickett, good job. Uh, Tyler Chatwood wants an extension. Um, Honestly... I don't know. We'll, we'll we'll see what we want to do with him at the end of the year. Probably won't. And if he continues to actually struggle like he has right now, I really wouldn't be opposed to trading in midseason. So Tyler Jays looked pr he looked pretty good in his first start. Although actually his uh, FIP wasn't too good. But um, Paxton. Yeah, we have like a lot of uh, options at starting pitcher. So if we once we get Fernandez back, if we wanted to move Chatwood and maybe get like a really good bullpen arm, or uh, I don't even know another outfielder or something, we could totally do it. But, uh, anyway, so, uh, Juan Lucero right now, still not playing that well. I sent, uh, Brian Harris down because he really was struggling, and, uh, yeah, you see he was, I mean, it was only 40 ABs, but he just didn't look at it all, so I just figured, you know, it's only 22, we can give him some more seasoning, uh, so to say. But he's really hitting the ball well in AAA, so I might call Harris back up over Lucero at some point. Um, we still have Cattell Marte, could also trade one of these guys. Um, let's look at Brady Aiken and Hunter Parsons. So Aiken's up to double A now. He's actually playing pretty well. So that's really good. I'm encouraged by that then. Um, so hopefully next year he can start the year in triple A and then go from there. Hunter Parsons. Um, all right. He's pitching pretty well in Modesto right now. So he's on the way up too, I think. I'm pretty excited to get these guys up here soon, soon enough. Oh, he's actually eight, out for eight to nine weeks. Dang, that stinks. Um, all right. So let's keep going then. Um... I right, keep going with the simulation. Oh, yeah, well, actually, we got to readjust our rotation so we can have um, our number one guy go. Who is that? I, I guess we'll go with Ryu first. Yeah, sure. Ryu, then Bonilla, Gray, Jay, then Chatwood. Sure, why not? And none of these guys made the also. They're all fully rested. They should be. Yeah, all right, cool. So we'll do that for the next five days. And how much time is Fernandez out for? Two more days. Okay, so we can actually add him back in just a matter of... A matter of moments, um, we lose to San Francisco, and all right, we win the second game. So rubber match, we're gonna have. We're not even gonna go with a rehab assignment or anything. We're just gonna put him right back in the rotation, and we will move Jay out, I guess. Um, let's send, let's wave in DFA Chase and Shree for now. I don't think anyone's gonna claim him, but let's move Jay out of the rotation. So we'll have him be long man slash emergency starter. Put Fernandez back in. And then I think we're probably going to move Chatwood here at the deadline. 
It's looking more and more like uh, he's the odd man out, sort of, if you know what I mean. But Alright, so Fernandez's first start back. Ooh, we lose 5-8. to eight. Looks like he didn't pitch too well. Alright, we got Washington, though. Ooh, a nice 17-3 to three victory. Ooh, alright, LA claims Chase and Shreve. That's too bad, but not a big deal. Keep going here. Alright, went in again. Yeah, claim executed. And... Ooh, alright, we take 2-3 of three from Washington, though. I was looking for the sweep there. Pittsburgh. Ooh, lose the first one. Still, actually, no, right now we're a game back of first place. Ooh, alright, lose again. Ooh, Jesus, we lost three in a row to Pittsburgh. Don't get swept. Okay. <laughs> um, Josh Whitaker's on free, on waivers. Yeah, we don't want him. Alright, so, standings. Right now, uh, just percentage points ahead of LA. Um, let's see, lineup. So, yeah, I think we'll probably move Lucero down. But as for the lineup, you know, are we first? In, yeah, we're first in run scored again, so I'm not too concerned about that. And our rotation's been good, not great, uh, but our bullpen's been really, really good. So, right, we get Fernandez back. I'm trying to think here. I mean. Right now, if the playoffs started tonight, what would our playoff rotation even look like? It would definitely be Fernandez, Gray, Ryu, and then, I don't know, maybe Bonilla, or maybe Jay if he starts pitching well. So, I don't know. I mean, I, I just don't think Tyler Chat would, you know, I mean, let, let, let's see what we could get for him. And if it's anything that I think can help the team right now, then uh, I think we'll have to make them, we'll have to pull the trigger because he's certainly the odd man out. I think, and I'm a little bit concerned about that fourth spot and a potential playoff rotation, but I think the top three are good enough that um, it's not something to concern ourselves too much with. Like, I think Fernandez, Gray, and Ryu is a pretty good one, two, three, based on the way they've pitched this year and last year, too, so. All right, but let's see what the offers for Chatwood are going to look like. I'm not really sure we need, like, any position players. I just think a bullpen arm would be nice, or, uh, you know, even if it's just, like, a pitching prospect or something, I mean. Ooh, Jesse Winker, holy smokes. Oh, baby, I would love to get Jesse Winker. Uh, we don't really have a spot for him, unfortunately, but this is like... Ooh. All right, wait, let's, uh... All right, let's see on Winker. At the very least, I mean, if we can get someone like this, it at least gives us some flexibility. Let's see if we can get a good prospect for him instead. I'm not sure if they just really like Chatwood or they are really down on Winker. Oh, all right, so they don't have a lot of money. Um, we do have cash though, so we could give them cash. What are they? What is makes? Okay, let's let's offer three million, and then try to get like Dylan Paulson. Oh no, they still can't do it. Oh, we gotta give them like five million. Oh, all right, so we could get a really good prospect like a uh, Dylan Paulson. Oh, I guess he's not that great. What about uh, I'm gonna rose out for a while. What about this outfielder? All right, so he's oh this outfielder's a stud, number one overall draft pick. Doubt we're gonna get this guy. Very bad deal. Imagine it would take a lot to get this guy. Oh yeah, Foscalina. And I don't I don't think that's just because uh Oh actually it might be just because we uh they couldn't take on any more money. Oh no, never mind. Alright. Uh Ramsey Jonathan Windham, I remember him, I had him in a uh, different save once. Um Dang, this guy would be awesome to get, but I don't think it's gonna happen. Oh, he would be he's a stud though. Him and Dahl in the same outfield. Oh my goodness. What if he gave up... <laughs> what if he gave up uh, Isael Soto? Maybe. I would definitely give up Lucero in a deal like this. What about Lucero? And instead of Soto, they can have Cattell Marte as well. Probably not. I'm just throwing crap against the wall. This really wouldn't happen. And this is pretty unrealistic too anyway, so... I'm <laughs> just gonna stop while I'm here. Um... Alright, so I think we'll go after Winker then, and if we get Winker, we can trade, we can definitely trade Lucero, we might even be able to trade Isael Soto. The thing is, Winker, alright, he's got probably two more years of team control left, but they're at relatively steep prices. So if I get him, I want to be playing him every day. So I could play him over Mike Poppy right now. Um, and send Lucero down, keep Brian Harris down keep Gallo, and then maybe, you know, we can move a guy like Soto in the offseason, potentially. Um, and we could also try and move a guy like Soto right now and get a uh, a nice pitcher back, if we could. Soto looks like he's going to be a pretty good player, though, you know? Know what I mean? Um, 
get Winker. I feel like getting a guy like Winker is pretty smart. Yeah, I mean, getting a guy like this is, you know, really good opportunity. I think this would be a very good move. Um, <laughs> Andrew Benatendi, the guy the Red Sox drafted, could get this guy. I do like me some Andrew Benatendi. All right, so I had to stop and uh, think about this for a moment, but I actually decided I'm going to go with Andrew Benatendi. Um, really, you know, almost for, like, selfish reasoning. I just kind of am curious... Um, just because, like, you know, he was the guy that Red Sox drafted in real life, and, uh, it'd be cool to play with him. But also, I mean, there are a couple good reasons. One, he can play center field, which is important if we're going to move Soto. And two, he is going to be cheaper than Jesse Winker for a while. So it's going to cost us Alan Hansen, who was a guy I was trying to move anyway, and JT Salter. Um, Salter is, you know, he's got two and a half star potential according to OSA ratings, but he's a 24th round draft pick, and he's been stuck in a ball for a while. Questionable work ethic, like, I have no problem getting rid of this guy. So, all right, we'll pick up Andrew Benatendi. And um, now that would allow us to move one of our outfielders. So, ideally, I'd like to move Juan Lucero. I don't know how much value he holds, but I think he'd be the guy to... I think he'd, he, he'd be the odd man out out of, you know, this group if you include S.A.L. Soto. But we might be able to get more for Soto. I just think Soto's going to be a serious ball player. So, if we can get a good pitcher for Juan Lucero, i call that a pretty good move. Um, starter or reliever at this point. Just because I still think, you know, even though our bullpen area has been really good, been really, you know, it's like, what, what was it, uh, almost tops in the NL? Like, just because we lost Crockett, I think uh, it's a really big blow. And so, especially if we're thinking about the playoffs, I really, I mean, I think, uh, you know, I've talked about it before, I think relievers are extremely overvalued, but I also think a good bullpen is a really good entity. I just think it's hard to predict, like, good relievers from year to year. But I do value a bullpen. It doesn't, I don't mean to, like, devalue the bullpen. I think that, uh, Especially in this game, I've noticed it's really important to have a good bullpen come playoff time. So, all right. Ooh. Eduardo Rodriguez and Taiwan Walker. That's some pretty. That's a pretty serious offer from the Red Sox. Um, Billy Hamilton. Rob Ref Snyder. Why can't get Lonnie Chisholm all back? Rugnet Odor. That's a pretty serious offer, too. He's only 25. Stalin Castro. Juan Candeliero. Ooh, who's this guy? Five star catcher. Whoa. Strain PCL, but we don't really need a catcher. Still, though, that'd be a mean pickup. Uh, could get Tyler Matzak back. Of course, I'm not actually going to do that. Um, I'm liking one of those Red Sox offers, though. Ooh, Cargo. We had a chance to sign him in the offseason, though, so I'm not really a point in getting him back. Here's some good relievers. Edwin Diaz. Oh, yeah, he'd be a nice reliever to get. Steven Matz as well. He could be a starter. But I think I'd rather have uh, one of the Red Sox starters. Madison Bumgarner. What's he making? $12 million. Whew. That'd be pretty That'd be pretty nice. I don't know. Got a starter like Bumgarner to add to the rotation. We could afford that, apparently. Be a one-year kind of thing, but still. You Darvish. Makes way too much. Aaron Nola. Jameson Tyon. I'd like that Bumgarner offer, though. Austin Hedges. Kyle Seager. Whew, Kyle Seager. Jesus. Alright, so the question is, Bumgarner or one of the guys from the Red Sox? And I'm going to try and take my bias out of this, but Eduardo Rodriguez, yeah, he's had some really good years lately in Boston. He's locked up on a nice contract, I think, too. Ooh, yeah, he doesn't make anything. Ooh, I like that. I like the looks of that. Ooh, he's pitching the ALE, so that's a good sign. Um, Taiwan Walker, he's having a really good year, too, but he doesn't have quite the track record. And he's not on the friendly extension that Eduardo Rodriguez is on. So I'd definitely rather get Rodriguez. Ground ball pitcher, too. That's good. Um, so the question is Rodriguez or Madison Bumgarner? Well, Bumgarner would really, uh, you know, fix our... He would give us a good four in our rotation. Bonilla could be our, f our fifth. But at the same time... Hmm. I don't know. I mean, I, I'd still honestly be interested in moving Bonilla for Alan Webster, too. If that offer is still available. I'm not really sure it will be. He might be hurt, actually. Oh, Jesus. Did he get hurt? Oh, I don't know where Alan Webster is. Is he in AAA? Did he fall off the map that much? Maybe he got dealt. I don't know. Apparently he got dealt. Wait, let's see if I, if I can find him. By shopping Bonilla. I don't know. I, I'm, I mean... Rodriguez is definitely the long-term move, but, uh, you know, we have a good team this year. And getting Bumgarner would certainly help that playoff rotation. But I kind of am leaning towards Rodriguez just because 
the contract and he's younger and you know long term I think it would help I think the benefit like I think the advantage I mean honestly who knows who would be better I, I, I guess I would lean towards Bumgarner having a better chance of having a more successful second half with us but at the same time it is kind of a crapshoot so I think I'm leaning towards Rodriguez right now but I do want to see what Bonilla could get us as well just because if Alan Webster was still out there, considering how Benia's done, he's had some good starts, but he also hasn't been that great on the all-in-all. -all. So if Webster was still out there, I would not mind doing a deal like that. Um, well, it doesn't look like he's being offered up, but there are some pretty good offers here, including that catcher. Um, even though it seems like we have every good catching prospect ever. Christian Walker also wouldn't be a bad pickup. Chikini, all right, so no, no other starters. There aren't really any. I don't know. This is pretty much the only good young player we could get. But this guy, I mean, it seems like he'd be worth picking up just for, you know, just for the sake of getting a, you know, a good asset. But we need Benia to be our, our fifth starter. I would trade. I mean, what what else would could we could, would it take to get this guy? If I could get him for cheap, I totally would. Um, no, he's gonna cost us something something substantial. So all right, uh, let's go through with uh, doing the deals we were just planning on doing. Um, so Lucero for, Lucero for probably Eduardo Rodriguez. I think that's what we're going to do. Oh, Rick Porcel is in Pawtucket. Nice. And, oh, I thought Henry Owens got hurt. I guess he's healthy now, but he's struggling. Yeah, he did get hurt. So yeah, went on that rehab assignment. Um, all right, Eduardo, get him for Juan Lucero. Good guy, Eduardo. Yeah, right, just one of the guys. Good. Good, good stuff. And um, if we try and poach a good reliever off of them. Ooh, maybe a Ken Giles? What would it take to get Ken Giles? Even if it's just a one-year thing? Because I don't know, he has, a pretty, he has a pretty expensive contract if he's going to get another year in arbitration. Uh, Ryu now. Okay. Alright, so we'll just do this then. So we get Eduardo Rodriguez to add to the mix. Um, players DFA'd. All right, so we'll add both these guys: Ben Attendee and Eduardo Rodriguez. Two real-life Red Sox. You know I'm. You know I'm a fan of that. Uh, ben Attendee, and we'll put Ben Attendee as the backup center fielder as well. Soto can be the backup first baseman. Um, we'll play Ben Attendee every third game. Oops, we want Soto doing that. We want Soto every second game. That. Um, all right, so do this. and pitching staff put Rodriguez there. All right, and we still have Tyler J, so we could. Uh, I don't know. I guess then we could. Well, no, I want to keep Bonilla then. Well, I don't know if if getting if we have Tyler J, we have Urias still. Yeah. All right, then I'm gonna trade Bonilla for uh for that catcher from the Royals because it seems like this is just a good buy low candidate. And I mean, Benia is good, but he's not really anything special. Whoops, not Fernandez. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Los Alberto Benia, and it's great changeup. Yeah, all right. They can go uh, have fun in Kansas City. We're going to get Armando Arazia. Arazia. Put him on the DL for now. Uh, I'm not sure what we'll do with him when he gets healthy, but we will see. He's only day-to-day, -day, but still, we'll DL him. All right, so... That is that. Um, ooh, ooh, shoot, Brian Harris got hurt. He's out for three weeks. Okay, it's not a big deal. All right, so let's keep going here then. Um, keep checking the waiver wire for the next couple of days. And then move past the trade. Oh, wait, I forgot to... We have to set our AL lineups. Whoops, the daisies. Paste. We'll just put... Uh, do the same thing as usual. Soto can DH. Oops. And the game is smart enough that, like, if Gallo needs a day off, it'll just put Ben Attendee there. So I'm not worried about setting all that up. All right, one more day till the trade deadline. Dang, we lose to Oakland again. Got to start playing better. All right, there we go. We went two to one. Okay, so that is going to do it. Uh, we have moved past the trade deadline. This is our team for the rest of the year. I think we have a good shot at making the playoffs at the very least, considering our standing right now and the improvements we made to the team. And I think uh, we also have a pretty good shot at taking on the Dodgers for the division here. So. All right, let's get uh, let's get to it. We will see you guys uh, probably tomorrow. And um, if the division race gets close, ooh, Corey Dickerson got hurt. Oh, he's struggling so badly in Tampa. Yikes! Um, if if we get into a close pennant chase like I did uh, before, then we will uh, do another 
September episode or whatever, like I did the other day. So, all right, thanks for so watching, guys. Hope you enjoy, and I'm out. Peace.